Hello dear students, today we will discuss the poem Punishment in Kindergarten. This poem is written by Kamla Das. Today in this lesson or lecture we will try to explore the meanings, explanations and we will also try to see what are the poetic techniques that have been used in this poem. So, today we will see Kamala Das's poem, which is written in Punishment in Kindergarten. We will try to talk about it, we will see its explanations, and then we will see its poetic devices, and then we will see its poetic devices. तो सबसे पहले हम कमला दास के बारे में थोड़ा सा जानने की कोशिश करेंगे कमला दास वॉज एन इंडियन प्रोलिफिक राइटर हु रोट इन इंग्लिश शी वॉज बॉर्न इन मालाबा इन केरला ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ मार्च नाइनटीन थर्टी फोर सिंस शी वॉज ए बॉर्न राइटर After marriage, her husband supported her to take to the writing and it is said that when Kamala Das's all household members would go to sleep, she would sit on the table that was placed in the kitchen and she would start writing there until the morning. And it is in 1999 Kamala Das converted to Islam and assumed the name of Suraya Kamala Das. Then her poetry is around the exploration of womanhood and love. And it is interesting to note that Kamala Das, who was born on 31st of March, died on 31st of May. But it is 2009, so she lived for 75 years and two months. Now let us come to the text of the poem. The text of the poem is Today the world is a little more my own No need to remember the pain A blue frocked woman cast Throwing words at me like pots and pains To drain that honey colored day of peace Why don't you join the others what a peculiar child you are. On the lawn in clusters sat my classmates sipping sugar cane. They turned and laughed. Children are funny things. They laugh in mirth at others' tears. I buried my face in the sun warmer hedge and smelled the flowers and the pain. The words are muffled now. The laughing face is only a blur. The years have sped along. Stopping briefly at beloved halts and moving sadly on, my mind has found an adult peace. No need to remember that picnic day when I lay hidden by a hedge watching the steel white sun standing lonely in the sky. So this was the text of the poem. I must tell you one thing about this text that it is not written in meter. Therefore, this poetry, it is in blank verse. And most of the poems of Kamala Das are not good at music, but we can see strong, strong feelings can be seen through the writings of Kamala Das, through the poetry of Kamala Das. She has used simple words, she has used simple language, to discuss, to draw her conclusions about life and she has portrayed life, she has portrayed womanhood, she has portrayed love but that is very much simplicity of her language and that is the brevity of her language, that is her diction and her diction is very beautiful, it is highly appreciable. So, I was telling you that 
कि कमला दास की टेक्स्ट जो हमने पढ़ी इसमें कोई मौसीकियत नहीं है इसमें तगजुल नहीं है इसको मौसीके पे नहीं गाया जस जिस तरह से आपने वर्ड्स वर्थ का डेफ उडिल्स देखा या बाकी चीजें देखी लेकिन यहाँ पे एक चीज जरूरी है कि वर्ड्स वर्थ ये जिस जिस तरह से एक वर्ड्स वर्थ ने लिखा है या कॉलरिज ने लिखा है या बाकी पर्ट्स लिखा है कमला दास का डिक्शन उससे थोड़ा सा डिफरेंट है उसका असलूब थोड़ा डिफरेंट है ये किसी मौसीकियत पर नहीं है लेकिन इसके अंदर जो अल्फाज उन्होंने इस्तेमाल किए हैं वो बड़े ज़बरदस्त हैं बड़े गो के सादा लफ्जों में उसने अपनी पोइम रखी है लेकिन बड़ी जबरदस्त इजहार करती है तो ये पोइम पढ़ने के बाद हमें पता चल जाएगा नाउ लेट अस कम टू द टेक्स्ट ऑफ द पोइम दैट इज लाइन वन टू लाइन सेवन टुडे द वर्ल्ड इज ए लिटल मोर माय ओन द पॉइट सेज द पॉइट सेज दैट टुडे आई एम ए ग्रोन अप द वर्ल्ड इज ए लिटल मोर माई ओन The now the, the the world is my own. World belongs to me now. I can understand. I can take decisions in this in this age now. I am a grown up. So it she wants to say like that. That today the world is a little more my own. No need to remember the pain. So I don't need to remember any kind of pain. What kind of pain? A blue frocked woman cast. There was a woman. There was a teacher of uh, Kamla Das. who caused her to go through the pain she caused her to go through the pain on the pretext that um, kamla das was admitted in the school in kindergarten the poetess was admitted in the school in kindergarten and she was new to the school naturally she could not mix up with other children so she was taking alone on the picnic when she was alone sitting alone the teacher noticed that uh, the poetess was sitting alone so she went to him she tell she insulted her she scolded her she rebuked her she told her unwanted words and she used harsh language and that is so kamla das says that now i remember those things when that blue frock teacher my that woman when she came and she caused when when she threw words like the pots and pans she was throwing on me now this is a simile she was throwing words like pots and pans this is similarly i will be discussing it later on in the poem words that be like pots and pans to drain that honey colored day of peace now you see honey honey is a sweet um, you know it is a kind of a food it is given by honey bees so honey is considered to be the sweet when we want to say something honey we want to say sweet so it was a sweet day actually for children all days are sweet when it is a picnic day if it is a picnic day it is a sweet day for children so she says that it was we were in the i was also enjoying the picnic but though i was keeping alone but when the teacher rebuked me she drained she took away all that charm all that happiness from me and all the charm was gone waste so she told me why don't you join the others what a peculiar child you are so she told me you are a peculiar child you are a strange child peculiar means strange you are a strange child why don't you mix up with others to yahan pe main ye bata raha tha ki kamla das ek excursion pe jab choti wo thi kindergarten mein usko dakhil kiya gaya tha to excursion picnic pe jate hain apni teacher ke sath to wahan pe wo hote hain kyunki ye choti si bachchi thi abhi main ye nahi school mein dakhil hui thi ye dusron ke sath nahi ghul mil rahi thi तो इसलिए टीचर ने जब इसको नोटिस किया तो जाकर के उसको झड़का उसको डांटा उसको रिव्यू किया इंसल्ट किया कि कहा कि तुम कैसे बच्ची हो तुम क्यों जा करके क्यों नहीं जा करके बाकी बच्चों के साथ खेलती हो तो ये कमला दास कहती है कि ये मेरे लिए बड़ा मसला हो गया कि मुझे याद है कि आज अगर जो मैं बड़ी हूँ और मैं समझ सकती हूँ मेरी दुनिया आज मेरी है लेकिन वो दिन मुझे अब भी याद है जब उस ब्लू फ्रॉक पहने वाली टीचर ने मुझे ये कह कह कर बड़ा रिव्यू किया बड़ा बहुत डांटा कि उसने मुझे कहा कि तुम क्या अजीब गरीब बच्चा हो बट ए पेक्यूलर चाइल्ड यू आर वाई डोंट यू मिक्स अप विद अदर चिल्ड्रन तुम बाकी बच्चों के साथ क्यों नहीं घुल रही हो तो उसे क्या हुआ कि वो जो खुशी का पिकनिक का दिन था वो सब उसका मज़ा किरकिरा हो गया ना आई विल बी गिविंग यू द एक्सप्लेनेशन इन इंग्लिश लाइक दिस द पॉइट सेज दैट नाउ शी इज एन एडल्ट एंड द मिस्ट्रेस ऑफ हर ओन वर्ल्ड सो शी डज नॉट नीड टू रिमेंबर द पेन कॉज टू हर ऑन ए पिकनिक डे बाय हर टीचर वेन शी वॉज ए मियर चाइल्ड इन किंडर गार्टन क्लास शी वॉज वेरी शाई एंड कैप्ट अलूफ फ्रॉम अदर चिल्ड्रन 
the teacher in a blue frock had rebuked her and the poetess recalls the incident and says that the words of the teacher came to her as someone throws pots and pans on somebody. The poetess, the child then, felt highly insulted and the rebuking took away all the charm of the picnic day she was on with her classmates. The teacher had told her as to why didn't she mix up with other children. Now let us come to line 8 to 13. Since I have given lines, because I, mean, I have already told you that there is no meter ka system, there is no stanzas that are not given in it. Because there are 2 or 3 stanzas that are put in it. If we look at our book, it seems like there are 3 stanzas of poem. लेकिन यहां पर इसका स्टेंजा का कोई नहीं है आप वो देख सकते हैं उसमें अगर आप पोएम को गौर से देखेंगे ये एक कंटीन्यूअस टॉक है इट इज अ कंटीन्यूअस टॉक इसको ब्लैक वर्स इसीलिए कहा गया है ये कंटीन्यूअस टॉक है लेकिन ये जबरदस्त पोएम इसमें जबरदस्त जज्बात का इजहार है इजहार ये है कि जो पॉइंट हमारी है वो जो कि इतनी बड़ी हो चुकी है इतनी बड़ी भी है वो लेकिन बड़ी होने के बाद भी उसको वो बचपन के वो जो उसके साथ वो घटना घटी है वो उसके ज़हन से नहीं निकल रही है वो फिर उसको याद कर कर के अपनी पायम में लिख रही है नवलाइन एट टू थर्टीन द टेक्स्ट ऑन द लॉन इन क्लस्टर्स सेट माय क्लास बेट सिपिंग शुगर कैन दे टर्न एंड लॉफ्ट चिल्ड्रन आर फनी थिंग्स दे लॉफ एंड मर्थ एट अदर स्टेयर्स आई बरीड माई फेस इन द सन वॉम हैज एंड स्मेट द फ्लावर्स एंड द पे On the lawn, in cluster sat my classmate sipping. On the lawn means it the lawn could be in a park. So it is obvious from this word that the teacher had taken the children of kindergarten to a park for picnic. So sat in clusters means in groups. Clusters, my classmates. The poet says that when the blue frock teacher rebuked me. My classmates were sitting in groups, they were sitting in clusters together in the lawns of the park and what were they doing? They were sipping sugar cane. They were sipping, they were just taking the sips of sugar cane. Sugar cane, you know it is a kind of juice taken from sugar cane. It's, and they turned and when they heard my teacher rebuking me, they turned their heads and looked towards me and they laughed. They turned and laughed. They had a good laugh and children are funny things. Now the poet says, so what is children are concerned? Now the poet, poet uses two narrations, as a child and as an adult. Here he says, she says as an adult, that children are funny things. Children, children are funny, very much funny. But they, they make a fun because they are not to be, they are very much innocent. They are funny people. They are funny things. They laugh in mirth at others' tears. They, when they say others are in tears, when they say somebody in tears, they laugh in happiness. They feel happy. Mirth means happy. Happiness. They feel happy. They laugh in mirth at others' tears. When they say others are weeping, they are in tears, they laugh much and more. So, what did I do? When the teacher rebuked me and my classmates laughed at me, I buried my face in the sun warm and hedge. What did I do? I buried my face. Means I hid my face. I buried my face. I hid. I hid my face in the a sun warm and hedge. Hedge is called a bush. You see when you go to a park there are bushes. You can hide. A small children can hide behind a bush. So what did she do? She, the poet says that I buried my face. I hid my face in the sun warm and hedge and cement the flowers and the pan. And what did I do there? I record this pain. Tears were coming out of my eyes. And at the same time, the fragrance of the flowers was also coming. The scent of the flowers was coming. To me, I smelt both things. I smelt my pain, my tears, as well as the fragrance of the flowers. So, Shaira kehti hai ki jab meri blue frock wali teacher ne mujhe daanta, to waha pe picnic mein, पिकनिक एक बाग में हुआ है एक पार्क में हुआ है वहां की क्यारियों में टोलियों में बैठी हुई मेरी हमझोलियों ने द क्लस्टर्स मीन टोलियां माय क्लासमेट्स मेरी हमजमातियां जो थीं दे वर सिपिंग शुगर कैन वो गन्ना चूस रही थीं वो गन्ना पी रही थीं दे टर्न्ड एंड लॉफ्ट वो मुड़ी और उन्होंने मुझ पर हंसा 
चिल्ड्रन आर फनी थिंग्स बच्चे होते ही फनी हैं आई बरीड माई दे लॉफ इन मर्थ एट अदर स्टेयर्स वो दूसरों के आंसू देख कर खुशी से हंसते हैं आई बरीड माई फेस इन द सन वॉमन हैज मैंने अपना चेहरा एक धूप से तपती हुई झाड़ी के अंदर छुपा लिया एंड समेट द फ्लावर्स एंड द पेन और मैं अपने आंसुओं का दर्द पी रही थी सूंग रही थी और इसी तरह से मैं जो वहाँ पे जो ये हैं जो फूल थे उन फूलों की खुशबू भी मैं सूंग रही थी फूलों की खुशबू भी आ रही थी और उसके साथ साथ क्या हो रहा था कि मैं वो जो तकलीफ मुझे पहुँची थी उसको भी मैं महसूस कर रही थी उस झाड़ी के पीछे एक्सप्लेनेशन द पॉइंट सेज दैट नाउ शी इज एन एडल्ट एंड द पॉइंट सेज पॉइंट सेज दैट she recalls the incident that uh, the poetess recalls the incident when the teacher had rebuked her she was harshly asked to mix up with other children on this insult the other children who were sipping sugar cane had turned and looked at the poetess and laughed at her they had enjoyed the tears and the pain caused to the child by the insult of the teacher the poetess had hid her face in the nearby bushes that was warm with the sunlight in the that shade of the hedge she had tasted the pain and the fragrance of the flowers simultaneously now line 14 to 19 the words are muffled now the laughing faces only a blur the years have sped along stopping briefly at loud hearts and moving sadly on my mind has found an adult peace now the poet says that the that, that now i am i am grown up i am i am now a very grown up person now those words when that teacher used which were coming to me as parts and pains i remember those words subtle but they are muffled now but i don't remember ex- remember the exact wording is now they are muffled they are mingled up they have gone they have gone faint in my memory they are almost they have been got neglected by me they are muffled they are they are intermingled they are muffled wo gudmud ho gaye hain they have muffled and the, the laughing faces at those faces of my classmates who were laughing then they are now only a blur blurring you know when you can't see anything clearly you say it is a blurring you say my eyes are blurring because i can't see that in kashmiri you say saaf in urdu ye se dhundal ka cha jana so she says that those faces are not i don't remember those faces now i remember very much low about them this is a blur now the years have sped along because since so many years have passed stopping briefly at beloved haunts and moving sadly on there have been happinesses in my life there have been sad moments as well in the life and now that incident is has become a blur in my mind that children have become blur in my mind who are laughing at me those words have got muffled now and my mind has found an adult peace now i am an adult and my mind is now stable it is with peace so the poetess wants yahan pe poetess ye kehna chahti hai ki wo alfaz jo us waqt us neela firaq pehne wali meri ustani ne mujhe kahe the अब वो मेरे दिमाग में गुड़मुड़ हो गए हैं अब वो मुझे तक मुझे पूरी तरह से मफल्ड हो चुके हैं पूरी तरह से याद भी नहीं है और वो हंसते हुए चेहरे वो बच्चों के जो उस वक्त मुझ पर हंस रहे थे वो अब मेरे सामने धुंधल के हो चुके हैं वो अब मेरे सामने मधम पड़ चुके हैं अब उनको मैं नहीं समझ पा रही हूँ नहीं, नहीं समझ सकती हूँ नहीं देख सकती हूँ बिकॉज द ये अर्सपेड अलाउंड क्योंकि बड़े साल गुजरे हैं बड़ी मुदत गुजरी है स्टॉपिंग ब्रीफली एट अबाउट एट ब्लाउड हॉल्स एंड मूविंग सैडली ऑन और जिंदगी में खुशियों के मौके भी आए हैं एंड मूविंग सैडली ऑन और इसी तरह से गम भी आए हैं मुश्किल भी आई हैं परेशान भी आई हैं और अब माय माइंड हैज फाउंड एन एडल्ट पीस और अब मेरा दिमाग जो है उस वक्त तो बचगाना था तो वो छोटी छोटी बातों पर भी उस वक्त फील करता था लेकिन अब मैं बड़ी हो चुकी हूँ अब मैं ग्रोन अप हूँ अब मैं बालिग हूँ अब मेरे जहन में मेरे जहन में अब एक बाबा तौर पे एक अमन मेरे जहन में एक सुकून एक चैन आया हुआ है नाउ द एक्सप्लेनेशन गोज लाइक दिस द पॉइंट सेज दैट शी इज नाउ एडल्ट 
and the childhood experience recorded in the poem has long ago happened and is now a past experience. The poetess is now grown up and the incident has almost become faint in her memory. The poet, her poetess hardly recalls the faces of her classmates who had laughed at her when the teacher had insulted her. The poetess is now an adult and has peace in her life, but the poetess has not forgotten the childhood incidents, whether happy or painful. Now let us come to the last lines, line 19 to 22. And adult peace, this has been discussed already in the last. Now no need to remember that picnic day when I lay hidden by a hedge, watching the steel white sun standing lonely in the sky. Now the poetess says, now when I am an old and now when the words of that blue frock teacher has muffled and when those laughing faces have become a blur, on me and now when I have found an adult piece now what is happening there no need to remember that picnic day I need not to remember now that incident of that very picnic day that had taken place in my when I was in kindergarten I don't need to remember that because I don't now uh, I understand what has happened now I don't need to remember that that picnic day where I lay hidden by a hedge when I was hiding myself behind the bush and watching the steel white sun and I was looking upwards on the bright sun that was that was shining brightly steel white means very bright I was looking at that very sun that was lonely in the sky standing lonely in the sky and the sun was shining lonely in the sky and myself I was also lonely standing behind the bush جہاں پہ شائرہ کہتی ہے کہ اب چونکہ وہ لفظ الفاظ جو اس استاد نے استانی نے مجھے کہے تھے وہ بھی گڑ بڑ ہو چکے ہیں وہ چہرے بھی اب دھندل کے ہو چکے ہیں جنہوں نے مجھ پہ ہنسا تھا لیکن مجھے وہ اب یہ چیز یاد رکھنے کی ضرورت نہیں ہے کیونکہ میرے دماغ میں اب سکون کی, کی جگہ ہے اب میں بڑی ہو چکی ہوں بڑے دن دیکھے ہیں لیکن کوئی ضرورت نہیں ہے وہ چیز یاد رکھنے کی اس پکنک ڈے پر جس دن میں نے وہ چہرہ چھپا رکھا تھا اور میں جھاڑی کے پیچھے بیٹھی ہوئی دیکھ رہی تھی آسمان میں سورج اکیلا بڑی آب و تاب کے ساتھ چمک رہا تھا اور میں اکیلی ان جھاڑیوں کے پیچھے بیٹھی ہوئی تھی ناؤ ایکسپلینیشن گوز لائک دس دا پوائٹ سیز دیٹ شی ڈز ناٹ نیڈ ٹو لک بیک ٹو دیٹ پاسٹ پکنک ڈے وین شی واز کالڈ بائی ہر ٹیچر بٹ شی ڈز ریمبر ہاؤ شی لے ہڈن by a hedge and watch the bright sun that appeared as lonely in the sky as she, the poetess, felt hiding herself behind the hedge. Now you see, when we, we are concluding this poem, I will come to this point now, that this poem gives us two to three central ideas. The central idea of the poem is that childhood incidents are hardly forgotten. Number one, number two, we can also say that the pains born in childhood take with you the whole journey of life. You cannot forget them. Number three, you can see it is nostalgia. The adult poetess is remembering her childhood and she is feeling nostalgic about her childhood and she writes it in the poem. Now, let us see what are the poetic techniques that have been used in this poem. The poetic techniques or they are called literary devices or they are called figures of speech used in this poem are two. One is simile and one is imagery. So, what is simile and what is imagery, we will be looking to it. Now, simile. Simile is comparison of one thing with another thing of a different kind used to make a description more emphatic or vivid. اس کا مطلب یہ ہے اس میں ایک simile استعمال ہوئی ہے اور ایک اس میں imagery استعمال ہوئی ہے اس poem میں قبلہ داست نے استعمال کی ہے. Simile تشبیح کو کہتے ہیں جیسے کہ میں اس سے پہلے اپنے تین lectures میں نے جو دیئے ہیں figures of speech پر وہ میں نے وہ میرے بھی youtube channel پہ ہے میں بار بار بتا رہا ہوں آپ کو وہاں پہ آپ جائیے دیکھیے یہ آپ کے فائدے کی چیز ہے یوٹیوب میں آپ اتنی چیزیں دیکھتے ہیں ان چیزوں کو بھی دیکھا کریں ایوب خان دلبر ٹائپ کریں آپ یوٹیوب میں آپ کو میری وہاں پہ 
वो मेरी चैनल आ जाएगी उस पर आप क्लिक करें क्लिक करने के बाद आपको वहां पे बहुत सारे असबाक मिलेंगे तो वहां पे मैंने जब फिगर ऑफ स्पीच डिस्कस करा तो मैंने पहले ही कहा था कि सिमिली को तशबी कहते हैं उर्दू में तशबी का मतलब ये हुआ कि दो गैर जिनसी चीजों को जो एक दूसरे की जो गैर मतलब जो हम जिनस नहीं है बल्कि गैर हम जिनस है दो गैर हम जिनस चीजों के दरमियान जब हम किसी चीज में मुासला डोंटते हैं मुजना करते हैं तुलना करते हैं तो उस चीज को तशबी कहते हैं दैट्स कॉल्ड सिमिली वेन वी कंपेयर एंड कंपेयर टू थिंग्स ऑफ डिफरेंट काइंड एंड ड्रा सिमिलरिटीज बिटवीन दे दिस इज कॉल्ड ए सिमिली फॉर एग्जाम्पल when the poet says the pain that was caused to me by the blue frog woman who threw her words the words were coming like pots and pans now you see in this throwing words like pots and pans this is in the poem simile yahan pe istemal hui hai ek jagah pe simile istemal hui hai was she was throwing pots and pans words like pots and pans लाइक like का इस्तेमाल जहां पे आ जाता है या एज का तो हमें समझना चाहिए कि सिमिली है तो अकॉर्डिंगली अदर एग्जांपल है जैसे अब मैंने डेफोडिलस अलेवंथ क्लास में पढ़ाए थे उस वक्त मैंने कहा था कि वॉन्डरिंग वेन वर्ड्स फॉर सेज आई वॉन्डर्ड लोनली एज ए क्लाउड मैं अकेला घूम रहा था अकेले बादल की तरह यानी आदमी एक बादल दूसरा दो के दरमियान मुजना हम कहते हैं वो शेर वो शेर जैसा बहादुर है शेर जैसा है शेर हालांकि अलग है और आदमी अलग है लेकिन हम ये कहते हैं कि शेर के अंदर जो मतलब दिलेरपन है निडरपन है या बहादुरी है वो इस आदमी के अंदर भी मौजूद है हम कहते हैं वो काला कब्बे जैसा है हम कहते हैं वो इसी तरह से सफेद बर्फ जैसा है कहते हैं ना हम वो नीला आसमान जैसा है ब्लू एस से कहे ब्लू लाइक से कहे ब्लैक लाइक क्रू रेड लाइक ब्लैट Red like crimson, we say like these things. So other examples are beautiful as rose. So this is simile used in this poem. Now the next one is imagery. Imagery is that kind of poetic device in which human sensation is involved, in which human sensory, human sense is involved. We 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 all know humans have five senses. Number one, it is hearing. Number two, it is seeing. number 3 it is tasting number 4 it is smelling number 5 it is touching touch smell taste hear and see these are the five senses when poet involves these sensory organs of a reader this is called imagery when poet writes something it is an imagery so i have written over here मैंने इमेजरी कहो हम कहते हैं कि जब जो पॉइंट जब लिखता है जो जो हमारे पांच हवास हैं देखने के सुनने के चखने के इसी तरह से महसूस करने के जो हमारे पांच सुनने जो हमारे हैं तो ये वो चीज़ें हैं जो इंसानी हिस इनको हवा से खमसा कहते हैं जब शायरी में इस तरह शायरी की जाए और इमेजरियों का खासकर ज्यादा इस्तेमाल होगा खासकर विजुअल इमेजरी का ज्यादा इस्तेमाल होता है शायरी में तो जब शायर इन चीजों का इस्तेमाल करता है तो हम कहते हैं कि यहाँ पर इमेजरी इस्तेमाल और इमेजरी पांच किस्म की होती है यहाँ पे इमेजरी पांच किस्म जैसे यहाँ पे हमने लिखा है वन ऑफ द लिटरेरी डिवाइस दैट एंगेज द ह्यूमन सेंस ये वो लिटरेरी डिवाइस है जो ह्यूमन सेंस को इन्वॉल्व करती है जैसे साइट हेयरिंग स्मेल टच एंड टेस्ट अब विजुअल इमेजरी मीन साइट इसके पांच किस्में हैं विजुअल इमेजरी इट बीन साइट यू हैव ऑडिटरी इमेजरी और यू कैन कॉल इट साउंड इमेजरी यू कैन कॉल इट हियरिंग इमेजरी इट इज रिलेटिंग यूर हियरिंग देन यू हैव ऑल फैक्ट्री इमेजरी इट इज रिलेटेड टू यूर स्मेल वेन यू स्मेल समथिंग एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो कॉल इट स्मेल इमेजरी देन यू हैव वेस्टेटरी इमेजरी वेस्टेटरी इमेजरी मीन्स वेन यू टेस्ट समथिंग it is called taste imagery then you have tactile imagery it means it is related to your touch so now let us see the examples which are in this poem used if you are asked to write one example of simile from the poem punishment in kindergarten what can you write you will simply write the example of simile in punishment in the poem punishment in kindergarten is 
throwing words like pots and pans. Similarly, if you are asked to write the imageries, now you see, I can uh, I can guess there are four imageries involved, four sense imageries are involved in it. Visual imagery is there, auditory imagery or sound imagery is there, you have the taste imagery and you have the smell imagery. Now, let us see, a blue frocked woman, a when the poet says blue frocked woman, vision comes to our mind. Hamare zehen mein ek picture a jati hai. Jo hi shaira kehti hai ki ek nile firaq wali aurat ne mujhe ye takleef pahunchayi. To nila nila firaq wali aurat hamare zehen mein a jati hai. Hamari nazron ke samne ghoomti hai. So this is called, this we call, it is called visual imagery. What is it called? Visual imagery. Then you have throwing words like pots and pans. जने ये साउंड जब कोई किसी पे बर्तन फेंकता है तो उसे आवाजें निकलेंगी आवाजें तो जरूर आएंगी उसमें से कोई टाई की थुई की इसी तरह की कोई आवाजें आती रहती है थ्रोइंग बर्ड्स लाइक पॉट्स एंड पैंस सो दिस इज अ काइंड ऑफ ऑडिटरी इमेजरी और यू कैन कॉल इट साउंड इमेजरी इट इज यूज्ड इन द पॉइंट अकॉर्डिंगली व्हेन यू से टेस्ट व्हेन यू से शुगर कैन सिपिंग शुगर कैन दे वर सिपिंग शुगर कैन एज सून एज यू हियर as soon as you read sugar cane the taste of sweetness comes to your mind aapke dimag mein taste aata hai sugar cane ka meethe ka dimag mein aapke aata hai agar isi tarah se hum kahenge ki usne us usne mirchi khai to aapke zehen mein teekhe pan ka taste aa jayega aapke aur aur koi cheez kahenge hum jo bahut kadwa hoga to hum ye bhi keh sakte hain ki usne aisa aisa kiya so sipping sugar cane my class the in loans the club my my classmates sitting in clusters sipping sugar cane my classmates turned and laughed yahan pe sipping sugar cane jo hai this is called this is called gustatory or taste imagery and the smell the taste of flowers and the pan now the when when she says that i was sitting i was uh, watching the steel steel by sun by the hedge smelling the taste of um, flowers smelling the taste of flowers and pain wahan pe poem mein aise hi likha hai smelling the um, uh, this pain kya hai kya likha hai wahan pe ye main aapko yahan aapke liye padunga ha my face in the sun of hedge and smelled the flowers and the pain smelled the flowers and the pain yahan pe likha hua hai तो यहां पे स्मेल द टेस्ट ऑफ फ्लावर्स एंड द पैन सो दिस इज यानी यहां पे वो फूलों की फ्रेग्रेंस भी वो सूंघ रही थी और वो अपना दर्द भी सूंघ रही थी यहां पे दिस कॉल्ड ऑल फैक्ट्री इमेजरी और दिस इज कॉल्ड स्मेल इमेजरी ओके नाउ एज फॉर दिस लेसन इज कंसर्न आई हैव ट्राइड टू एक्सप्लेन द पॉइम टू यू आई हैव ट्राई टू गिव its meanings in a very lucid manner in a very simple manner i have tried to i have uh, um, also um, this powerpoint presentation it has been shared on our school page whatsapp page fair secondary school bilgam e content if you go to that if you can use the link if there is a link available you use that link i request my students please go through these lessons they are very much important for you in this period of this we may say it is a kind of a natural turbulence you you are keeping at home you stay in home stay safe but at the same time please take to reading please take to writing please take to your all this lessons and all other things because tomorrow it may be too late for you because we also so it is then it is no use to cry or spill milk अब क्या पछताए होवत जब चिड़ियाँ चुग गई खैत ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए मैं उम्मीद करता हूँ कि आप इन लेसन को पढ़ेंगे यूट्यूब चैनल पे जाइए मैंने आज इसी लेसन के हवाले से मैंने ऑनलाइन क्लास भी दे दी थी अब मुझे जहन में नहीं है कि कितने स्टूडेंट थे लेकिन बहुत सारे लोगों ने पूरे डिस्ट्रिक्ट में बल्कि पूरी वादी में उस लेसन को देखा पता नहीं इसमें भी कहीं पर खामियाँ रह गई होंगी ये मैं नहीं कह सकता हूँ आई कैन नॉट से बिकॉज नो बडी इज परफेक्ट टू एर इज ह्यूमन there might be discrepancies if you find some go to the youtube write in my inbox about that improvement is may ho jayegi because there is always a scope for improvement i with this i think that i must take leave from you 
with only one thing please stay home stay safe thank you very much